Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another quick video. Today, I've got a little bit of downtime and I've been having a small problem with my 2008 Ford Explorer. You guys may have seen this on my channel before. I recently did the timing chain on this thing and ever since then, it's been running great. I haven't had any issues, no check engine light, nothing like that. However, I have noticed a small problem whenever I'm sitting in the vehicle. Typically, if I'm at a stoplight or if I'm sitting in a parking lot and it's in park, I have noticed that the engine does vibrate a lot more than I think it should. Now, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's got a misfire because when I accelerate, the engine doesn't bog down. It's got plenty of power. And so it really doesn't feel like it's a misfire. Besides, this thing has brand new spark plugs and brand new wires. So a misfire, while I wouldn't rule it out completely, I still think is very unlikely. In my opinion, it's probably gonna be something like a vacuum leak because like i said you really only feel it during idle and that's really where vacuum leaks cause a problem so anyways while i know a video like this may not be something complicated it might actually be a very simple fix i figured sharing this video may actually help somebody who's running into the same problem and i figured this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how i diagnose something like this so let me take you guys inside the vehicle and i'll show you what we're working with all right so here we are inside the vehicle i'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up now, if you guys take a look at the instrument cluster, you can see that we don't have a check engine light. In fact, we don't have any warning lights illuminated, no ABS, no traction control, no airbag, nothing like that. This problem is not something that has set a code. However, I can definitely feel the engine shaking. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you this because even if we look at the tachometer, that thing is staying pretty stable. The needle's not bouncing around, but I can definitely feel this in the seat of my pants. Well, maybe that's not the right way to describe it, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that you pretty much have to be sitting in the vehicle to know what I'm talking about. So the first thing I wanna do is connect the scan tool, look at some data so that we can get a good idea of how this engine is running. So today I'm just gonna be using the YA200 from King Bolin, a very basic low cost global OBD2 scan tool. I think this thing runs somewhere between 20 to $25. Very attainable for most people, even on a budget. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. You can see our scan tool is powered up. We're just gonna go into diagnosis. It gives us a basic overview. Again, our mill status is off. That's our check engine light and our DTC count is at zero. So we don't have any code stored. If you look here, you can see our monitor status. They're all complete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on okay. And this is where we have all of our diagnostic functions. So we can go in here and read codes. I'm gonna click on okay. We'll click on stored codes. And as you guys can see, no codes are stored in this module. Let me back out and we'll just see if we have any pending codes. And again, it says no pending codes are stored in this module. So like I said before, guys, codes are not going to help us today. We're pretty much gonna have to go ahead and look at some live data. So let's click on live data. We'll choose all data stream. And here we have all of the data PIDs that are available to us in Global OBD2. And so what I wanna start by looking at is actually our fuel trims. Our fuel trims are going to give us a good idea of how this engine is running. So if you take a look down here, you can see that we have our long-term fuel trim for bank one. And already I can see something that I don't like. We are up at around 15%. Check it out, guys. We're definitely running lean here. Now let me scroll down to bank two and check out our bank two our long-term fuel trim is somewhere around 6%. So it definitely looks like we're running lean here. Now, I don't know if these numbers are enough to cause a check engine light. Really, you don't wanna see these numbers any higher than positive 10 or any lower than negative 10. But from experience, I can tell you that Ford has a pretty high threshold on what the fuel trims can be before it'll actually set a check engine light. I've had Fords running fuel trims around 17% and they don't set a check engine light. So it doesn't surprise me seeing a number like this without there being a code for a lean condition. Now, anytime we have high fuel trim numbers indicating that we have a lean condition, the first thing we wanna do is try to identify what type of lean condition we have. Do we have a lean condition because of a vacuum leak? Or do we have a lean condition for some type of fueling problem? Meaning, do we have a weak fuel pump that maybe just can't keep up and supply enough fuel to the engine? Or maybe clogged fuel injectors that are not spraying enough volume? Those are all possibilities here. Now, one of the quickest ways to determine whether or not you have a vacuum leak or a fueling problem is to look at these fuel trims at a higher engine RPM. So I'm gonna go ahead and rev this engine up and we're gonna hold this somewhere around 3000 RPM, right about there. So I'm gonna try to hold it steady and let's take a look at our fuel trim numbers. And what we wanna know is do these numbers get better or do they get worse? In other words, did the numbers come down or did they go higher? 
So take a look here at our long-term fuel trim on bank one. You can see that now we're down to somewhere around 4.7%. And if we take a look at our bank two, you can see that we're hanging right around negative one and zero. So I think that answers our question here. Did our numbers get better or did they get worse? We can see they definitely got better. And if you take a look, I let off the accelerator, we're back at idle and we're somewhere back at around 14%. We're definitely dealing with a vacuum leak. Now, just a brief explanation for some of you guys that don't understand how this test works. Essentially, when we raise the RPM, the engine is going to demand more fuel. Now, if we had a problem where the fuel pump couldn't keep up with the demand of the engine, we would be seeing our fuel trim numbers go higher. And the reason for that is because our fuel trim numbers are basically the computer adding or taking away fuel. When we have positive numbers, the computer is adding fuel. When we have negative numbers, the computer is taking away fuel. So again, at 3000 RPM, if the fuel pump can't keep up with the computer demand, we're going to see higher fuel trim numbers because the computer is trying to command more and more fuel because it's seeing that it's not getting enough. Now in our case, our test results were just the opposite. At 3000 RPM, we saw that the fuel trim numbers came down. Now the reason that tells us that we have a vacuum leak is because the vacuum leak only affects the fuel trims during idle. If you think about it, during idle, the throttle body is closed, so the intake manifold is under vacuum negative pressure. Once you open the throttle body, you're going to introduce atmospheric pressure, which is basically the air outside. At that point, the computer is not going to notice any type of vacuum leak on the engine. Hopefully what I'm saying makes sense, but essentially when you do this test, if the numbers go higher, you have a problem with fueling. If the numbers go lower and they get better, you're probably looking at a vacuum leak. So now that we know we're dealing with the vacuum leak, the first thing I wanna do is go under the hood, connect the smoke machine to the engine and see if we can find a leak. All right guys, so I've got the smoke machine connected. Let me show you the setup. Over here we have our smoke machine. Today we're using the Mr. Car Tool. You guys have seen this on my channel before. Now let me show you guys over here. You can see I already went ahead and I removed the air box. And what I'm gonna be using to inject the smoke is this little air bladder. And so this is basically like a pump up air bladder that blocks the airflow through the intake tube. And then it gives us a little port so that we can inject our smoke. I've got the smoke machine connected to the battery. It's already powered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the air mode, which is going to activate the compressor inside. Then we're gonna click on the smoke mode and that's going to activate the heater inside that's going to create the smoke using the oil that's inside the machine. So right now our system is filling up with smoke. We'll give it about a minute or so. Then we'll see if we have any leaks. All right, so that didn't take very long. I can already see we got smoke coming out over here and it looks like it's coming from the EGR valve. Let me zoom in a little bit there. Yeah, we got smoke coming from the EGR valve. Now, I don't know whether it's the valve or the gasket that's leaking, because we've got a ton of smoke coming out over here. Honestly, I hope it's not the EGR valve because I actually recently replaced this thing. So hopefully it's just the gasket. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Okay guys, so it might be a little difficult to see, but if you look down here, this plate is where the EGR valve mounts and there is a gasket that sits between the EGR valve and this plate. And if you look closely, you can see well, let me blow it again. You can see that that is where our smoke is coming from. Now, if you look closely, you might actually see some bubbles coming up where that gasket is sandwiched between the plate and the EGR valve. I think those bubbles are from the oil in the smoke that's starting to build up on the leak there. So again, pay close attention. I'm gonna blow the smoke out of the way. You guys see those bubbles coming up? That's definitely where the leak is. Yeah, so it looks like the valve itself is okay. I might be able to get away with just replacing the gasket. Now, after looking at the rest of the engine using a flashlight, I wasn't able to find any other leaks down here where the intake manifold is and where the fuel injectors are. Uh, you can see we don't have any smoke building up over here. I know it's really hard to see using the camera, but if you look closely, you can see that uh, we don't have any smoke coming out from down here. The only spot that seems to be leaking is that EGR valve. One hour later. All right, guys, so fast forward. I went ahead and I removed the old gasket. You can see that I have the EGR valve unbolted. Now, I did run down to the local auto parts store, and unfortunately, they didn't have the exact same gasket uh, for this 2008. However, they did have a gasket for an earlier model, which if you take a look, is pretty much the same shape. The difference being is that this original one is made out of aluminum, and the older style is made out of this paper with metallic material. I don't exactly know how to describe this, but this is basically what you find on a lot of exhaust systems. Now, to be honest, I kind of think that this is gonna work a little bit better only because it seems like it's a little thicker. And so I hope that by going with this thicker gasket, it might seal up a little better. 
Now, if you guys are interested, this is the part number. It is a Felpro 70149. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and install this thing and we'll see what happens. A few moments later. All right, guys, so fast forward. I've got the new gasket installed. I've got the engine running and so far it's running really smooth. Now let's take a look at the fuel trims on the scan tool and check it out, guys. Our short term on bank one is actually going negative. Now, if you look at our long term, we're at 12%. And if you look at our short term, we're at negative six. And so what's happening here is that the short term is counteracting for the long term. So right now we're going through a correction phase. I have not cleared any of the memory. So what we're seeing here is a live update. Now let's move over to our bank two. Take a look here. Our long term on bank two is at 5% and our short term is at negative 5%. So we're pretty much zeroed out over here. I'm gonna let this thing run for a little bit longer, let the computer do the adjustment. But so far, I'm happy with the results. The engine is idling nice and smooth. It feels a lot better. Our fuel trims are showing a correction. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I'm calling this a fix. All right, guys, well, there you have it. After replacing the EGR valve gasket, we were able to fix the problem. Now, after letting it run for a little while, the fuel trim numbers did start to come down. So that was definitely a fix. Now, I know this is probably a really short video, but hopefully I was able to help someone out. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. That's really all I'm trying to do with these videos. Now, as far as the YA200 scan tool, if you guys are interested, I will leave a link down below in the description. Like I said, this thing, you can pick it up for less than $25. Definitely a tool that pretty much anyone who owns a vehicle should have. Now, it's not gonna have all the functions of a professional scan tool, but it does give you the ability to read codes, read some basic live data, check monitor status, and it's even got a pretty cool graphing mode. If you guys are interested, click on the link below in the description for more information. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna end the video off here. Like I always say i hope you found the video useful informational educational entertaining if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks